Hi everyone, uh, I'll be posting a series of lectures on probability and random variables uh, which will help you in solving your uh, the project 2 or the assignment 2 and also I have, I have very few leftover videos which uh, I mean uh, to understand those videos this will serve as a good basics. So first I'll start with the definition of probability, dis probability distributions, uh, continuous and discrete distributions. Uh, and some basic mathematics involved in it so which will enable us easily to understand the especially the assignment problems i i understand i mean i assume that most of you are aware of what i'm going to teach in this lecture but it's a quick uh, revision uh, because you know if you're in your fourth year and I, I felt it could be easy to revise it once so uh, to quickly talk about uh, random and probability and random variables a random variable is nothing but a, a variable uh, which represents an event of a random experiment so for example i said when do we resort to probabilities uh, i took an example of rolling a dice a dice has six possible outcomes so one two three four five six now when you roll it as i said it's it becomes extremely complicated to predict the exact outcome so therefore we resort to probabilities now a random variable is a variable that i mean i can associate a variable which corresponds to an event of a random experiment so here the experiment being rolling the dice and the outcomes of this experiment i'm going to call them as the it is a variable and that is a random variable so let x be a random variable here then x can take integer values from 1 2 3 4 5 6. now the moment i say this these events of this random experiment are random meaning i do, i just don't say that this event happened i can never say that an event happened i can only say an event had happened with a certain probability so this function probability of x for different variables i mean as a function of the random variable x is what we call a probability distribution function okay it's a function that tells you what is the probability for different values of x so for example i've shown here on this graph uh, here uh, this is on the x-axis i'm plotting the random variable so in this case it's one two three four five six it, the experiment here is rolling a dice and on the y-axis, I'm plotting the probability distribution function. So that plots the probability of each of those events. In this case, I'll assume it's a paradise where all the possible, all the outcomes are equally likely. So the probability will be 1 by 6. So sum of all the probabilities should be equal to 1. So that is satisfied here as well. Now this random variable uh, is what we call as a discrete random variable. Meaning it has only a finite number of values. But as we will see, especially when you want to characterize noise and all that, most of the values that we'll encounter will be infinite, meaning it will it'll form a continuous range. In that case, we cannot define probability for a specific event. So here I can define probability for an exact event like this. Okay, so when you have infinite such events, we can't define. So I'll take an example like this. So here I have, let's say I consider all the real numbers between 1 to 100. Now, if I say that, okay, assume it's uniform, uh, the probability that I'll pick any one of those numbers between, real numbers between 1 to 100 is same, then if I ask you what is the probability that I'm going to pick 2, then it's going to be 0 because there are infinite such events. I mean, everything is equally likely. So, if you're just, it's, it's almost impossible to say that uh, what is the probability with which, or, or rather the probability will be negligibly 0 when you're going to just single out a single event. In such cases, we are interested in rather a group of events. So for example, I can ask what is the probability that the number you are going to pick is less than 2. So if it's less than 2, of course, the, uh, the, I mean, the numbers are already greater than 1. So it has to lie in this range. So I can say the probability will be like, you know, this, this is unit 1, 1 by 100. So that will be the probability that the number is going to be less than 2. If I ask you what is the probability that the number is less than 3, you can say it is, you know, uh, it, is, it is 2 by 100 and so on okay so if i ask you what is the probability of x being exactly equal to one it is zero and this is i mean a very quick very interesting example is that let's say uh, you, you can even talk about temperature because temperature when we measure it's not an exact i mean you there is no way that you can exactly measure what is the temperature or you can exactly uh, tell what is the temperature at a single point in space okay so again in uh, those cases again we can use a probability distribution function uh, to describe what is the temperature or at any point what will be the temperature with a certain probability okay so now 
when you when your random variable happens to be a continuous random variable okay for example here what we discussed was a discrete random variable where it took discrete values but when your random variable happens to be a continuous variable then it's called as a continuous random variable and the probability distribution function becomes a probability density function so f x of x so this is called as a probability density function so where the point values don't make any sense okay so that is if i ask you what is the probability that your x lies between x to dx so let's say your pro the random variable x lies between x and x plus dx so you have a, a density function so this is x and this is x plus dx so if i ask you find the probability then it will simply be the area under the density function okay so in this case i took an example here if i asked what is the probability that the number x lies between 1 to 2 then you'll have to integrate it by from 1 to 2 here okay so this fx of x is now what called it's called as a density function where the point values doesn't make any sense if i ask you quickly what is the probability that x equals x it's it's equal to a certain value here in this equation if i use that then dx will be zero so probability of x equal to x means that you know dx equals zero then the area under this integral will also be zero so the probability of a single event is going to be zero okay so that is why for it when you have a density function if you want to find a probability you have to find probability in a certain range of values of x so again probability density function will obey this condition so what i've written here so the integral over the entire region of support so this x here uh, is, a, is called random variable and the possible values it's, it can take i can also call it as a region of support but I'll, I'll not use that word so let's just say the entire possible values of x you have to integrate it over that so here since i've assumed x to be a real number i've assumed the entire real axis from minus infinity to plus infinity so x is a real number so it's a one dimensional random variable okay we'll talk what is two dimensional later but i'll just introduce one dimensional random variable and x can go from minus infinity to plus infinity it's a real number of space so then integral or all the possibilities is going to be equal to one so when you integrate the probability density function over all the possible values of x that should be equal to one and that, that should make intuitive sense okay with integral or inter integrating the density function gives you the probability of a certain event in a certain range if you integrate it over the entire range that's like you have covered almost every event so what is the probability that every event will occur it's obviously certain one of those is going to occur so it will be one so uh, that's one property of a density function the second property of a density function is what we call mean what is the average value that this function is going to take that's called written as e of x e is here expected value expected value is nothing but average of a continuous random variable so that's defined as integral of x into fx of x dx so uh, i'll find i'll i'll take the i'll take the different values of x and multiply that with their probabilities okay so here i'll assume if dx is very very small x into dx uh, x fx into dx will give me the probability that x uh, that x will take a value x that multiplied by x and then i integrate it over the entire real space i'll get the mean value of x okay so uh, this is one important parameter the second parameter is uh, i think i'll, I'll i have not written here but it's expected value of x square which is we'll come to the uh, important term called variance so these are the only two terms we'll be dealing with okay so the other term it's called variance but to define variance it's how much the function is spreading around the mean value so it's called expected value of x minus mu the whole square you subtract the mean value mu here is mean of the function of the random variable you subtract it and square it you get uh, when you take the expected value when i say expected this is the uh, average multiplied by their probabilities okay so this by definition uh, again you can write it as I, I can expand this expansion so you will get x square plus mu square uh, minus 2x into mu so when i take expected value of this uh, expected is an average operator so you can take expectation inside this so you will get expected value of x square plus expected value of y square uh, minus 2 expected value of x into mu so you should understand expected uh, if you take expected value of a constant mu here is a constant so what is expected value it is the probabilistic average 
mu is a deterministic number it's a constant so uh, there is no expected it's it's same as mu itself so if you, if you take uh, the rand it's a deterministic value uh, so there is no randomness associated with it so expected value of a constant will be a constant itself so you will get 2 e of x into mu again e of x is mu so this will simply reduce to expected value of x square minus mu square so this is a very useful result uh, which we'll be using later okay so this is your variance so i'll i'll, I'll use sigma square as variance so that will be expected value of x square minus mu square where x square here is that it's the average value of the squared value of the random variable okay that's expected value of x square there are different words for it but i'm not going to use any of those now so we just we'll just learn the minimum basic terms you need so we introduced mean we introduced variance so we'll just look at some two very popularly used uh, random variables and continuous probability density functions and try to compute its mean and variance so the first one that is shown here is what we call as a uniform distribution so that is the probability for all the events between a and b is the same okay and the amplitude here this is i'm on the y-axis i'm showing the probability density function the amplitude of this uniform density function should be chosen in such a way so that the area under this should be one so this length of this is simply b minus a and so i should ensure that uh, the area is one by b minus a so if i i mean if i'm going to compute the area i mean the height here i'm sorry this is height here the height of this is one by b minus a so this is a rectangle if i just multiply the two i should get one so the area under this will be 1 and so that is a proper probability density function. If you want to compute its mean value, then you'll have to use this equation that is expected value of x. You'll have to just calculate one step of an integration. You can just freeze this, uh, you know, you can just pause the video and then look at this. So it will simply be the average that is a plus b by 2. In this case for a uniform distribution it is average so it is just a plus b by 2. And similarly, we can also compute expected value of x square or I'll compute the variance itself which is sigma square which is expected value of x minus mu the whole square. So you can follow this quick derivation. You can show it yourself. It's a very uh, simple result. You'll actually get you'll actually get b minus a the whole square by 12. Again these are two are very very useful results. For uniform distribution your variance is given by b minus a the whole square by 12 and the mean is given by a plus b by 2. So these are two important terms uh, which is very useful in understanding a uniform distribution. Okay, so again you can see there are two variables uh, we can actually predict the random the uniform distribution the uniformly distributed random variable if you know the mean and variance then you automatically can predict uh, can exactly predict what is your distribution going to look like fx of x. The distribution function is uniquely determined by mean and variance. Okay, so that's that's about uniform distribution, uniformly distributed variable and uh, uh, the probability density function of a uniformly distributed variable. The second or the most important function that we will be encountering quite often is the Gaussian distribution function. I've already discussed this once, so I'll just very quickly uh, rush through this. So this is the expression for the density function of a Gaussian distribution and this is the most commonly encountered uh, uh, distribution function especially your class grades and all that so it, it especially when the class strength is re really really large uh, when I plot the grades the score that the students get uh, generally you normally get a Gaussian curve okay so that will be most of the students will be cluttered near the average some few students will be uh, scoring pretty high and some students will be on the lower end okay so extremes are always few uh, most of them will lie in the uh, around the mean region. So again, Gaussian distribution is uniquely determined by two important parameters. One is mu, that is mean, and the other variable is sigma square, the variance. If you know mu and sigma square, and you are aware of that it's a Gaussian distribution, then you can exactly write what's your function, fx of x. It depends only on two variables you can see here. Other than, of course, x is a random variable here. Depends here on sigma and mu here. That's it. If you know these two, then you can write this function. You know everything you need to know about the uh, probability density function of a Gaussian random variable. The mean uh, again when you this is when you write your Gaussian function this way, uh, one by root of two pi sigma square, everything in square root, e power minus of x minus mu the whole square by two sigma square, where mu happens to be here, 
the mean so mean it's it's the point where your it's the center of your uh, distribution function so that's where you will have the maximum probability around the mean you will have maximum probability okay and when you move away from the mean away from the mean then the probability of the occurring occurrence of the events keeps becoming smaller and smaller okay and generally we consider uh, gaussian function to exist between minus 3 to plus 3 sigma which is 6 sigma most of the gaussian function gaussian functions area will lie between this in this 6 sigma interval and sigma sigma or sigma square it tells you how spreading the function is if sigma is really small then the function is going to be pretty narrow so which means all the events around the mean are going to be the more most likely if sigma is really really large if sigma is really really large then uh, the function will tend to be you know uh, then you can clearly see that uh, the function is spread over a large range and uh, the probability that the function the probability that i mean there is a high probability that the function will take a lot of values around the mean okay when you just uh, see what i'm what i mean by that is let's say you know that a system is a gaussian system it, i mean it's a an experiment as a follows a gaussian gaussian uh, probability density function then the outcomes of this experiment if i randomly pick the if i just conduct the experiment and i just tabulate the outcomes of those experiment most of the values will have a huge spread around the mean around the mean if your sigma is large okay again these are all pretty basic stuff uh, Uh, you have already learnt it, and I have already discussed even during mid sum about Gaussian function. So very quickly, I'll just uh, revise that. Okay, I just very quickly revised it. So that's it about Gaussian and uniform distribution. So now I'll very quickly start with one important thing, which is functions of random variables. Okay, let's say I can define now functions of random variables. X is a random variable, which means every value of x. there is a probability associated with every value that x can take a certain value uh, that for every value of x there is a probability associated with it so now when i define g of x then g of x will again g of x is also a random variable because uh, as a random function because uh, x is random so g of x will also be random so in that case if i can define a very important thing here the mean of g of x if let's say i call g cap of x here is expected value of gfx what is the average value that gfx is going to take that's given by this so it's integral of gfx times fx of x dx is simply the probability that x equal to x uh, i mean a, a very very small region so i'm just taking gfx here and a very very narrow region and i'm multiplying it with the probability so i'm it's like a weighted average okay i'm multiplying it with the probability for different values of x and then i'm integrating it completely okay it's a weighted average so expected value the average value of gfx is given by this equation okay it, it actually it makes proper mathematical sense but i'll just quickly i don't know how many of you will write it so very quickly we'll just uh, see where we are going to use this the next most important thing uh, which we'll be discussing uh, which is also in one of your assignments is a two dimensional random variable so i have shown here a two dimensional random variable is now instead of a single random variable you will have two random variables so for example it can be that i am rolling i have two dice and i am rolling two dice a die one and dice two dice one and dice two i am rolling two dice and i am looking at the outcomes the first die i am going to associate with a random variable x and the outcomes of the second dice i am going to associate with a random variable y again x can take 1 2 3 4 5 6 possible values and y can also take six possible values now i am going to plot x and y and the probability along the third axis so if you see there are 36 possibilities so there are i have shown it as this cross marks here so there are 36 possibilities so the first die output is 1 second die output is 1 corresponds to this first die output is 2 and the second die's output is 1 corresponds to this and so on and for each of those events i can define a probability each of this combined events so that is the first die is output being 1 uh, sorry first die is output being 1 and the second die output also being 1 that's a joint event what is the probability that both the dice show 1 and 1 that's a joint event okay so for as we discussed probability density functions for a single random variable uh, for a one dimensional random variable we can also define a joint distribution for a higher dimensional random variable 
So for a two-dimensional random variable, I can write it as this way. Pr probability of x, y, x equal to x, y equal to y. Okay. So for example, in this case, when I roll two dice, I'm going to assume that both the dice are independent of each other. So the outcome of the first die is completely independent of or the outcome of the second die. Okay, they, and vice versa, you know. If they are completely independent, then I can multiply the probabilities of the two events. So then, in that case, probability of x y into x of x, it will be simply be equal to probability of x equal to x into probability of y equals y. Okay, so here I have assumed 1 by 6 and 1 by 6, so you will get 1 by 36. Okay, so here on the third axis, you will actually see, you, will, you can actually plot the probability density functions. Uh, you will actually plot the... Uh, the value on the third dimension will be your probability density function. Again, the same condition holds. Now, instead of integrating it on, see, when you when you had a one-dimensional random variable, we either summed it along that x-axis, okay, or we integrated it along the x-axis. Now, when you have a higher dimensional, a two-dimensional random variable, then you'll have to sum it over both the dimensions or integrate it over both the dimensions. Okay, so similarly, uh, what I have discussed here is a uh, discrete time random variable. Similarly, we can assume x and y to be continuous and define what we call as a joint probability density function. Okay, it tells you what is the probability that x will take a certain value and y will take a certain value. Okay, it's a joint event now. So then we need to define a joint probability density function, fx, of, f, fx y of x comma y. So here, some properties of joint distribution. So if I integrate f x y of x comma y over the entire x y plane, if I integrate it in the entire x y plane, that's going to cover every possible value that x and y can take. So then, that's going to be equal to one. Okay, it's a probability space. So obviously, all summed of all the possibilities will be equal to one. Now I'll define two terms which are very important, which are called marginal marginal density functions. So f x of x and f y of y is what we call marginal density functions. From the knowledge of the joint density function, I can calculate the marginal density functions this way. So I want to find f x of x. I'll have to integrate out the y part. So take the joint distribution and integrate the y part. You get f x of x. And f y of y, if I integrate out that x part, if I integrate out the x part, then there will be no x variable in this equation. You will only be left with y. You get f y of y. So if you know the joint distributions, you can actually compute the marginal distributions. Okay. So if I'm going to perform only one of the experiments along x-axis, I can get those probabilities from the knowledge of the joint distribution. Now, if the two random variables x and y are independent, if they are independent, then the joint distribution will simply be the product of the two individual uh, probability density functions. Okay, so the joint probability density function will simply be the product of the individual probability density functions. And again, we can very quickly verify this equation, which is how do I find marginal density function? So which is, let's say I want to find fx of x. I have to use this equation. I have to integrate out the fy part, uh, the y part. So then if I substitute fx of x comma y as the product of the two density functions, I'll take x, fx of x as common out. So I'll, left, I'll be left with this. Now we know this is one. I mean, if you take any random variable y, we have taken out all the possibilities and integrated it. I'm going to get one. So you will get fx of x, which is this. This is just to validate this equation. Um, how do you get a marginal density function from the knowledge of a joint density function? Okay. Now it's often, sometimes it's more convenient when we resort to uh, x. I mean, when we resort to a polar coordinates. So what I've shown you here, x y coordinates is Cartesian coordinates. So similarly, I can represent them in a polar coordinates. Um, okay. So if I want to span out this entire plane, I have to travel in circles. So I'll start with a small circle here, and I'll I'll then span out this entire region through the circles. Okay. So then r and theta any point in this two-dimensional space can be represented by the radius of that circle and the angle at which this point is with respect to a reference line. Okay, so r and theta exactly tell you any point, you can locate any point in the two-dimensional space. Where again, for to the Cartesian coordinate, the, re the relationship is r is root of x squared plus y squared and theta is tan inverse of y by x. 
so using that again uh, now r will here go from the values of r will go from 0 to infinity because 0 radius to infinite radius right so r will go from 0 to infinity and theta will go from 0 to 2 pi okay so then i have to integrate this joint distribution return in polar coordinates f r theta of r comma theta if i integrate it from 0 to 2 pi for theta and uh, 0 to infinity for r and here uh, i just forgot to mention one point here so when i write it here dx dy is the infinitesimal area fun area in a two dimensional plane so if i take any area a small area dx and dy and then i keep integrating it in, i mean i keep moving this uh, small rectangle over the entire x and y x y plane then i'm integrating it over the entire x y plane so similarly in a cartesian coordinate that dx dy can be written as r dr d theta now dr is along the radial distance and d theta is along the angular the azimuthal plane you know sorry the azimuthal angle okay so this will be along the or the or i can say the circumference of the circle of radius r and this length of this arc will simply be r into d theta so the area of this small rectangle is going to be r dr d theta so you have to integrate it over this uh, if i integrate the probability density function over this entire plane i'm going to get it as one similarly similarly if i want to define joint uh, the marginal density functions marginal distribution functions then if i want to find f r of r okay f r of r so what is the i i know the probability over in the entire plane but i'm interested in finding what is the probability at a distance r at a distance r so i just need to find at, at a distance r it's independent of theta okay at a distance r what is the probability so then i'll have to just integrate it along this axis this circle uh, this circle here okay so i'll consider an infinitesimal element on the on that circle the length of the arc is going to be r d theta and when you sweep theta from 0 to 2 pi you are going to find integrate it over the entire circle so that's what this equation is f r r theta of r comma theta into r d theta integrating it from 0 to 2 pi you will get the marginal density distribution function or the marginal density function in terms of r okay here r goes from 0 to infinity so similarly we can define the marginal density function for the angle theta okay for the angle theta and here it is uh, marginal yeah marginal density function for the angle theta again here we are going to integrate it out in r so this will only contain uh, expressions in terms of theta again for independent distributions this is a very standard result you have to simply multiply the two uh, you know the distributions i mean the density functions in r and theta and you get the joint distribution in the r theta plane okay so this is sufficient what we have just laid down the basics for random probability and random variables the next class i'll directly start with the questions that we have been uh, that we are supposed to solve with the second assignment